Welcome back. As we pass over Skagit Island, we will journey to the Kukatali Preserve, which is located on Kikit Island, jutting into Skagit Bay, and connected by a sand spit to the rest of the Swinomish Indian Reservation. The preserve itself is part of the reservation and is co-managed by the Swinomish Tribal Council and Washington State Parks. It was a quiet morning, and being a weekday, I pretty much had the place all to myself. The only company were some boats offshore, in particular a cabin cruiser anchored south of the preserve. Connected by another sand spit to Kikit Island is the tiny and mostly barren Flagstaff Island. One thing I did notice is that the north shore of both Flagstaff and Kikit Islands is much steeper than the south shore, which has a gradual rise from the water, almost as if the islands are tilted towards the south. There is an open area near the tip of Kiki Island with a porta potty as the only amenity, but parking is about 1.1 miles away on the mainland since no ground vehicles, not even bicycles, are allowed on the preserve. So I had to hike out there with the copter on my back. There is a central trail with two parallel trails to the north and south. The central trail climbs to the highest point on the island so I took the South Trail, which had minimal elevation change, and set up on the spit between Kiki Island and Flagstaff Island. Now Flagstaff Island is off limits even to foot traffic. Since Flagstaff Island doesn't seem to have natural groundwater, vegetation is much more limited than Kiki, with only grasses and a few trees clinging to life. This makes it much less resilient to human incursions. Foot traffic is also prohibited on the north shore of Kikit Island, but not the south shore. And shellfish harvesting is allowed here, but only for members of the Swinomish tribe. I was also surprised at how clear the water was. For this flight, I did not use a polarizing filter, which is great at penetrating the surface of the water. Instead, I used a Polar Pro Neutral Density filter and I was still able to see quite a bit underwater. Here we are descending along the south shore of the preserve. You can see that that cabin cruiser anchored south of the island, which was one of the few signs of humanity in close proximity to Kukatali. As we continue to move east, one can see where Kikit Island is connected to the mainland via a narrow spit. And now we'll move west again. One of my main goals for this shoot was to be able to see those areas of the preserve that can't be reached on foot due to the environmental restrictions. Specifically, the north shore of Kikit Island and Flagstaff Island. One of the great things about camera drones is the fact that they can access places in such a way that they don't do any damage to the fragile ecosystems. This is a key advantage in my particular utilization of this technology. Although the camera is a very wide angle uh, camera with a 94 degree field of view, similar to a 20 millimeter camera lens, and can't really see things close up very well, it can capture the beauty of nature on a large canvas. Now there are some shots where the ground can be seen pretty closely in this video, but those were done at extremely low altitudes and could only be done in very close proximity to my own position in order to maintain that visual control over the quadcopter. We are now on the west side of Kikit Island and you can see that it's pretty steep sided with some pretty tall cliffs there. Uh, this may be, may not just be environmental reasons to prohibit foot traffic on the North Shore, it may also be safety as well.
For this portion of the video, we're going to take a nice close look at Flagstaff Island. Since it is off limits to foot traffic, the quadcopter is one of the best ways to take a good look at it. And you can really see how, unlike Keekit Island, and you can see Skagit Island off in the background there, it's not covered with trees. And I think that is because, as I mentioned earlier, because it probably lacks a, an internal source of fresh groundwater. Uh, to allow that vegetation to grow. So it's surrounded by salt water of Skagit Bay and basically rain is the only sort of fresh water that will make it onto that island. And that allows the grass to grow, but not much else. That large island off in the horizon there is actually called Hope Island and that's part of the Washington State Park System and actually has docks and some amenities on it for boaters to make their way to the island. And now we will be departing Flagstaff Island and the Kukatali Preserve and we'll be making our way towards Skagit Island. Like Hope Island that I mentioned earlier, Skagit Island is part of the Washington State Park System and is not part of the Swinomish Indian Reservation. Now, unlike Hope Island, it has no amenities and the only way to get to it is with unpowered watercraft. However, it is a pretty good place to get away from it all. Now as we rise over the island, we will begin a uh, not so great orbit of the island and you can see off in the distance that there's more uh, boat traffic to be seen as we get out into Skagit Bay. And you'll definitely see that in the next clip as I make a little descent into the bay and you can see quite a bit of boat traffic. And now we'll wrap it up with a nice pan around Skagit Bay. Off in the distance you can see some white smoke from Tesoro Refinery in Anacortes. And that high peak you see in the background is Mount Erie on Fidalgo Island. With Whidbey Island being most of the background on the west side of Skagit Bay. Well, I hope you enjoyed our visit to the Kukatali Preserve and the Sonomish Indian Reservation. If you like what you saw, please hit like and by all means subscribe. Later.